Um, so let's chat about the biggest news story this week, the return, the very gradual return uh, of our freedoms. Uh, within just hours of the plans being announced, Matt Hancock was quick to note in the media that the dates are apparently the earliest possible. Uh, um, and they're more likely to be extended than shortened. Uh, speaking at a school in London yesterday, the Prime Minister also announced there was no guarantee that England will end restrictions on June the 21st. Dan, what's your take on this? Boris has said that the liberalising roadmap is driven by the data, not dates, but it seems to be pretty date heavy. And if you're really going to be driven by the data, why can't the car on this one way irreversible route have an accelerator as well as a brake? Well, I think it probably does have an accelerator, actually. I mean, I think obviously we've had a number of statements from ministers and others saying these are the earliest dates. But I think the political reality is that as we move forward, if the data is as positive as many in government are, well, not just privately, are also publicly um, are saying it is, then I think when we've moved forward in about five or six weeks, if we have a situation where we have a you know a huge reduction in infections if we are in a situation where we've had a huge reduction in hospitalizations if we're in a situation where the the vaccine rollout is proceeding as successfully as it has been up to now i think at that point the political pressure um and indeed i think the science will uh, will mitigate um accelerating the timetable but i think one of the key things at the moment is you know, as, as we've seen it, Boris has been very, very careful and very keen on, on stressing caution as we unlock this time, contrasting with the way we unlocked last time. And I also think there's an element of, as, as well of, you know, the motorway rule. If you tell people that they can drive 70 miles an hour, they'll drive 80 miles an hour. If you say to the country now, you know, we could be accelerating this, we're going to be, we could be unlocking much faster, then I think people will immediately start rushing out. And, you know, the, 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 the sort of the, the, the respect for the rules, if you like, would, would, would quickly disintegrate. So that's why I think they're doing it. But as I say, I'd be surprised if we didn't see some form of acceleration at some point down this, uh, down this road. Chris, let me come to you. Listen, I don't know what your present position is on lockdown. You've had more positions than the Karma suit on lockdown, haven't you? You're in favour of this, against it. You've been in favour of some, against others. What's the what's the present Snowden prognosis on the government's lockdown plans? This is a, a terrible slur. I've been nothing but consistent the whole way through. I, was, I, I think I said last time I was on the show, I supported the first lockdown to save the health service from collapsing. I've supported this lockdown for the same reason. I didn't support the second one because I didn't think that the health service was in any danger of collapsing. And I think a lot of the science that was drawn up to justify that second lockdown was Mickey Mouse. And I have to say, I think the same is true, actually, of the science that has been presented um, to Sage by Imperial and Warwick and presented by Sage to the government, I think is uh, very, very suspect. I mean, making some simply unbelievable claims about how many deaths are going to be in the summer. I mean, what, what Boris didn't mention during his speech uh, and only vaguely alluded to was that you know, even in the absolute most optimistic scenario, Sage are predicting tens of thousands of deaths over the course of summer and early autumn. Even if everything goes to plan, even if the vaccines are much better than anyone thinks, are rolled out quicker than uh, the, the anyone expected, uh, and infection rates fall. I mean, it seems to me pretty obvious lobbying effort from the people in SAGE to deter the government from opening up in May, which seems to be what they were originally planning to do. Um, is Would it be right to open up in May? Maybe not completely, but I think you could pretty much be open up uh, open in may i mean the data and dan i think I, I agree really with what dan says the the data are moving in the right direction we know from last time the first lockdown we know roughly where we can expect to be the only unknown factor is reopening the schools which we didn't do during the first lockdown on the other hand in the first lockdown we didn't have 25 percent of the population already had the disease and we didn't have another yeah. another maybe 25 percent um inoculated with the vaccines so i don't think it's a, a, at all unreasonable to expect case numbers to be down below say two or three thousand by the end of next month uh, hospitalizations down below 300 a day um in which case you've suppressed it very greatly sure. and you don't need to have everybody vaccinated to start opening up in a much more significant way than has been proposed 